tell as I go down the side here that I've made more progress. And I have some things in place that have not been in place before. Let me get right into the build and show you uh, the accomplishments that I've made. And obviously I'm getting close to the finish line. I'm getting ready to start construction of the Texas. That's the building that goes underneath this pilot house. And it's not recommended that you get this wet because it'll mess it up. And it also suggests that you increase the cut on these lines to aid in bending this. Earlier on, I uh, bent some of the pieces without using those these tools that they provided, but I went ahead and put them all together because I think they could come in handy in the future for bending different uh, pieces of, of wood on a ship. So I'll hang on to these. I'll probably stain them or something, but I will use those this time. But I am going to go through and gently increase the depth of these lines to aid in the bending of these walls. Don't want to go all the way through, but if I do, in an earlier one, I could put cloth back here and it'll hold it together and I can bend it around that way. Could also probably use that butcher block paper. I resorted to putting cloth on the back because even though I had cut these through further, it wasn't enough. And this one split instead of bent, so you can see. So by putting the cloth back there, I can cut through all of them and then get a bend to it. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I have to put cloth on all of them. Just works better for me. Now I have them cut deeper where I can see there's a little flex to it. I'm going to try and add heat with a heat gun and see if I can slowly get it to take that bend. Got to be careful because then it, it doesn't too much on one board. That is working much better. So let me heat it up a little more. That's a little better. I've got a little bit of a, a sharp edge there, but I think I can work that out by bringing it out and kind of, there we go, manually. And I do think the cloth helps quite a bit because I can work with it better. I put the Texas building in place and I did end up, if I didn't say earlier, I did put cloth where the curved pieces are. It did help me out quite a bit. You do need to cut these almost all the way through, if not all the way through. You cannot use liquid on it. It'll destroy the wood because it's kind of a, um, almost like plywood, so do not use any liquid on it. You need to leave a space at the bottom. I didn't, so I had to sand off some of the cloth because you need all this space going backwards to get these two pieces to fit together. Then I also added on my own these little, I'll call them cleats, where that seam is. And I used super glue there and you can see I have it clamped in place and I have pretty good alignment so as soon as it dries I can go to the next step. Still have the doors to put on the front here. I think I can take this clamp off. I used wood glue on this part so that I could have some time to maneuver it and you can see where I've sanded off. I need to get a little bit of a flat edge there because that's going to be a door much like this one and I didn't want too much of a rough curve so I just kind of sanded off the edges of that curvature right there. Something I failed to show so I'll show it now. Here's the curved pieces and I 
there's an outline on this piece, a line that shows exactly where they go. So I had glued those in place first and then I could put this curvature around it and that helps hold it in, in its proper shape. There's one on both ends. I'm working on this little deck that's in front of this uh, pilot house. So I'm looking over here and I see these rails go over and they go over to a ladder. This is gonna need to match up. So I decided I'm gonna make this ladder first so then I know how tall those these uh, posts should be. So on the blueprint, there's a full-size image of the ladder. So I've cut the pieces, I'm taping this down to hold it exactly in place and I can glue those cross members on. I finished the walkway or the ladder and it's kind of a combination of just looking at all the small parts and finding the, the steps and the rails and different things like that. So I think I have this rail to put on. I'll do that probably after I put this staircase on the ship. I think this is approximately where it goes, but I'll look closer and get it in place momentarily. I finished the railing and the ladder. Only minor issue I had with the ladder is that the lower part I couldn't get over. It should be touching right there on that walkway. And I think where it is, is this ladder should have been slid over. But what I'm going to do is just put a little platform across there, like a ramp. I'm working on this overhang, and you can see there's like a, a guardrail here and some posts. Here they are over here. This drawing shows pre-assigned dots, but I can't see it now that I've covered that with paint. So maybe that's my error. I should have... You know, indented those a little more so I know where they are. So let me show you how I figured out where exactly to put them. First thing I did is I found the center by using a compass and getting the distance the same. That gave me this uh, circular pattern. Then I took cardstock and I drew that half circle. That gave me the front of the ship. Next, this is after I cut it out. Uh, I forget what these are called, whatever this thing is called. And I was able to set it on there and get the center and then do the increments out. And I could tell there were five. So I put one in the center, two on the ends, and then two divided in the center. That gave me a place to drill. I think this is a 1 16th by 1 16th. That's the drill bit that I used. And then I just rounded it out a little bit more. So this slides in there. It's a little tight, but it will slide in. And I'm sliding them down from the top. Then I'll come back and nip these off after I get it secured at the base. Put a little super glue somewhere in there, maybe underneath. Or I could actually lift it up, put a little on it, and then drop it back down in. And then I'll sand these off, and I'll just come back and repaint that little area there. Now I cut out that circle that I made with the pilot holes in it so it would fit under here to help me get these aligned how I want them uh, so that they're spaced evenly and spaced the holes should be the same. I've attached the two outsides. These little spacers are just to give the the railing a little height. This should be dry now. I finished this uh, steel banding on the smokestacks. I'm very happy with how those turned out. You can see in the background, I've also finished uh, these posts and the guardrail. This trim here and railing, I it moved on me like a millimeter, half a millimeter. You can see these two pieces here are way too close together. It shifted after I had put on the adhesive and I didn't notice it. It's not real noticeable other than to me because I know it's there. There you can see it, how close they are together. And then on the back of the ship, I have a little bit of a gap. So that's how much my slip was. There's a little bit of an optical illusion when it comes to what is a 
flagpole. It almost looks like it's attached there on some of the instructions. But in reality, it's right behind the Texas. That's the bottom part of it on the deck. And it gives a measurement of three inches, but that's not including this. So what I did is I just made my own. I'll show it to you on the ship. Here's a little better picture of it in this diagram so you can fasten it here and at the bottom. This is the hardware for the hog trusses and if you notice there are three different styles. This is plain. This has an extra tab right at the back. This one has the extra tab out to the side. So if you look close it's clear where they go but I almost missed it. So here's the furthest forward one and the diagram of it. And you can clearly see it's plain. Fortunately, because I put that one in place before I noticed all of this. Then the one that goes all the way back here, this one has the tab sticking out between the other two. And then you bend it down. There it is bent down. And it'll have some support lines going down to the deck. Then the final one back here is the one that has the tab out to the side. Obviously one for the starboard side and the other for a port side. Then they will go down and tie to the fender at the rear of the, of the boat. And all of these are to help support the paddle wheel so that it doesn't uh, pull under. So it, it keeps it sturdy with the ship itself. This is for the hog trusses that go on top of the boat. And I recommend you do these before you mount this on the ship, which is understandable because that would be hard to, to do with it on the ship. Here's what I've assembled, and I've done this part here. So this, I'll pull that knot through and shorten this up once I get it on the ship. So there's the eye bolt, and this will go on top of that hog post go down to this turnbuckle and then there'll be another one. When it mounts on the ship, it'll go all the way back. I noticed that this top building has a smokestack and I thought, well, it's empty inside. So I didn't think that was right. So I made a little furnace just out of scrap wood and kind of popped it in there. So when this is on, well, you can see better if you look with the lid off. It has a little bit of red to it and a little door and the chimney. And once I put this on, the two chimneys pretty much match it. So I thought that was a clever addition on my part. That'll be it for part 11. In part 12, I will be putting together the paddle wheel. It looks kind of interesting. I think that'll be a fun addition to the ship. I'm looking forward to it and I hope you are too. This is Boiler Dan 1. And as always, thanks for watching.